Hey everyone, Dr. Yu here. I'm back with my voice. Um, I'm going to start a new series for Teach Prep, which is going to focus on the reading section. Now, I and I've known this for a long time that um, many students struggle with the reading section, um, even for um, my very good students. Like they would get very high scores for the science section, like mid 80s, high 80s, low 90s but then they um, had a lot of trouble with the reading section. So I'm gonna try to make a few videos on the reading section to kind of help you prepare. I know a lot of the nursing schools have a minimum score for the reading section, which makes this even more important. All right, if the video is helpful, um, please let me know by subscribing, liking the video, commenting, especially if you have any questions, and certainly feel free to share the videos with somebody who you know may benefit from watching these videos. And all these things will definitely help me make more videos. I really need that support to make more YouTube videos to help students. All right, now let's jump in. So here are some of my suggestions for preparing for the reading section. Now for the first one, you can see, I um, have it there, you have to begin reading every day, right? If you don't have the habit of reading, it will definitely help you tremendously if you start reading from today. And you can definitely start from something small, like even one or two paragraphs for the first few days, first few, a week, and then gradually increase you know, the length. And this will really improve your reading skills because every time you read something, right, it, it's a good practice for the section of the brain, right, to try to read information, absorb the information, and you can read the textbook paragraphs. I know you all have some sort of um, anatomy physiology textbook. So read the textbook, it's a little bit dry, but the sentences are more complex, right? And it will um, help you kind of sharpen your reading skills. You can also find science articles and just regular news articles, definitely, spend some time reading those like when um, you're eating lunch right instead of checking your instagram and checking your facebook um, pull out um, a news website stick to the mainstream websites because the information is accurate and the writing is much better uh, i usually use npr um, or, or washington post or uh, the new york times so those are um, some of the good sources for you to read and kind of get used to the, the, the formal writing styles. And even novels, right? Like if you um, like to read the novels, that helps too, uh, because some of the paragraphs are not scientific, right? They're just kind of regular writing. All right, now the next two are really about um, kind of techniques that you can use when you take a, the reading test. Um, it may be helpful to look through the questions first, first before you start reading the paragraph. I found this very helpful for me. So usually when they give you a paragraph, um, there are multiple questions associated with the paragraph, right? It could be three, four, even five questions. So before you read the paragraphs, go through the questions very quickly so that your brain kind of knows what information you need to look for, right? So this will kind of help you find the answers more quickly when you go through the paragraph. Next technique is some of the answer choices can be pretty tricky. Sometimes they're very, very similar, right? So instead of, you know, just kind of focus on the one that you think is right, I would say evaluate all answer choices. So read every single one and then compare which one might be more relevant. And the last suggestion is just practice, practice, practice. Um, so the first point, point, like when you read a lot, that's good practice. And then also find some uh, practice questions and really kind of get used to the, the style right, of the questions on these. Okay, um, here is a quick overview on the reading section. So there are three sub sections. So this here, I really mean three sub sections. The first subsection is about key ideas and details. There will be 22 questions. Second subsection is craft and the structure, which will have 14 questions. And the last one is integration of knowledge and ideas. And there will be 11 questions on this topic. 
So in total, you are going to get 47 questions. But just like the science section, there are going to be six ungraded questions. So they call them pre-tested questions. So you will go through a total of 53 questions. So the first lesson I have here is going to be about summarizing a complex text. Okay? So this is under the key ideas and details subsection. So in this lesson, we're going to try to practice this particular task. Identify the topic, main idea, key points, and supporting details. Okay? Now, I went through the official study manual. Um, and here's a, what type of questions that you might see for this particular um, topic, right? So normally the questions will be worded like this. What is the topic of this paragraph? Which is kind of related to identify the topic, right? Um, another question you might see is which of the following titles best describes the topic of the passage? So again, this is about, about the topic. And then next one, which sentence summarizes the topic? Which of the following is the central idea of the passage? And then next one, how does the summary sentence support the main topic? All right, so I uh, found a very uh, useful paragraph for you to practice with this section. So you can pause the video, read the paragraph, and then answer the two questions on this slide. And then I'll have a, one more question on the next slide. Okay, so I'm going to review the answers. So when you look at this paragraph, normally, the summary sentence is at the beginning of the paragraph. So that will be the topic sentence. So you can see in this paragraph, first sentence says, humans have a temperature regulation feedback system that works by promoting heat gain, right? So based on this sentence, you know that the topic is about thermal regulation, right? In human body. And then uh, you can see here, it's heat gain. So that means this paragraph is probably going to focus on our body, on how our body can retain heat, gain heat to keep the, um, the temperature homeostasis. Right? And then you read the second paragraph, any prolonged exposure to extreme cold would activate the brain's heat gain center. So this further confirms that the main idea of this paragraph is going to be about how the body regulates temperature when the environment is cold. And then uh, you keep going. So these are going to be a detailed description on all the things our body can do right, to retain or to gain the heat. So first one, this will reduce the blood flow to the skin. Right? and shot blood returning from your limbs away from the digits, right? So that you don't lose the heat by um, blood going through the digits. And instead the blood will go into a network of deeper veins, right? So this way they're deep in the body instead of closer to the surface. So you don't lose heat that way. Additionally, the brain's heat gain center would also increase a muscle contraction, right? So if a blood flow is the first mechanism, then muscle contraction is going to be the second mechanism, right? Because uh, when your muscle contraction is increased, this will increase energy consumption of skeletal muscle and generates a more heat. So that's the second mechanism. And next one, your body would also, right? So this word also signifies that this is another mechanism. So your body will also produce a thyroid hormone and epinephrine chemicals that promote increased metabolism and heat production. Okay. So again, you can see the, um, the, the, the main topic of this paragraph is about how our body regulates temperature when it's cold. Right? And then there are three mechanisms introduced in this paragraph. All right, now what is your answer for question one? Which of the following titles best describes the topic of this paragraph? Impact of extreme weather on the body. So this is what 
uh, I was talking about earlier, some of the answer choices can be very similar. Um, so I put, a, like I made all these questions. So um, I try my best to kind of mimic what the T's questions would be like. So if you're not sure about A, you know, put a question mark there that you can come back after going through the rest of the choices. B, blood vessels and heat retention. Now that's um, just one mechanism, right? How our body can retain and gain heat. So this is a too detailed, right? This is definitely not a summary um, of what the entire paragraph is about. So this one is probably not the answer. C, body responses in exposure to cold. Now, I really like this one because this describes, you know, in general, what happens, what's discussed in this paragraph, right? It talks about all kind of three types of body responses. And those responses are generated when it's cold, right? So this, both parts are pretty good. So check mark. Um, chemical release and homeostasis, because B and D are very similar, right? There are two details and they're probably, you know, they are probably considered supporting details, but they're not um, a, a general summary of the main topic. Okay? And then you can compare C and A again. And A, even though it's um, somewhat correct, um, you can see it's not as clear as C, right? Because extreme weather, that could be cold weather, that could be super hot weather, right? And so the correct answer is C. Question two, which of the following is the central idea of the passage? So the central idea is also known as the main idea. And it's really, again, about how our body adjusts, right? Using different mechanisms or when it's cold. So which one is the correct answer? A, regulatory processes to cold. That's a pretty good answer, right? So possible answer. And let's check all the other answers. Energy consumption of skeletal muscles. Uh, so again, this is too detailed, right? This is one of the supporting details. No. Hormone and the temperature negative feedback. Now, if this is just about, if this is only uh, about temperature negative feedback, I would say, you know, it's more relevant. But then hormones, this is just too detailed, right? One of these mechanisms and not the, the central idea. Medical advice on combating, com, uh, combating hypothermia. So I throw this in to kind of trick you because the hypothermia is when the body is too cold, right? But there's no medical advice on when you need to do when you experience a hypothermia. Okay, now one more question about this paragraph. Again, just pause the video and then when you're done, resume the video. Okay. So question three, which of the following is a key point describing the cause that leads to all the physiological changes mentioned in the paragraph? So some key words here, we're looking for a key point, right? And then the, the key point has to be about the cause that, co that leads to all the changes. So is it a warm environment? No, right? This is how the body responds to cold environment. So cold environment, that's the correct answer, but let's double check everything. Brain's temperature control center, it is involved, right? Because it mentions the brain's heat gain center. But does this lead to all the physical changes? No, it's just a regulatory center, which is there, but you need to provide the stimulant, right? So that this control center can make some changes. High energy consumption, um, that has nothing to do with the main idea, right? This is something I threw there to trick you uh, in case you connect energy consumption of skeletal muscle to this answer choice. All right, so hopefully after this quick practice, you feel a little bit better about how to find the summarizing sentence, how to figure out what's the main topic, what's the central idea of a paragraph. All right, so this is the article where um, I got the paragraph from. So this is from a free online textbook. It's a pretty good textbook. So I provide the reference here if you guys uh, want to just get some free textbook to practice, practice, feel free to use this. 
All right, now if I can get to 400 subscribers, I will make another video. All right, guys, thanks for watching, and I hope this is helpful.